Big Italy 42 here with you once again with another Daily Academy podcast. This time I'm talking about trends and avoiding the noise. And these things are very key when you're not only building your lineups for your daily fantasy sports rosters, but also when you're doing your research. And that's that's where this mostly comes into play. I know a lot of people like to make their lineups or a tentative lineup early in the day and then base the rest of their research on later news that comes out. And in Major League Baseball, the only late news that's generally going to come out is going to be the lineups. usually have a pretty good idea of where a lot of players are going to hit in a given lineup against a certain handedness of pitcher. But noticing a trend is going to be important. Okay, For instance, the biggest trend if you're playing Major League Baseball is Coors Field. Play players at Coors Field. If you haven't heard that before, you'll know it now. There's always higher totals, great park factor, thin air. All of these things come into play, but... If that's the first thing, that is a trend, and it's going to be a trend forever, seemingly, because there's always a ton of runs scored in course fields. So as far as trends go, that's a great example of one that you follow the herd on. You don't be cute and try to avoid course field because your chances of winning the long run are very, very low by fading course field all the time. So another thing is hot and cold streaks. Um, These are some trends you can notice. These are more for NBA players, guys off the bench, you know, guys stepping into new roles, things of that nature. But um, it really is a mental thing with with Major League Baseball players as well. So, you know, they're up there. They're feeling good. They're on a hitting streak. Maybe you roster that guy at a cheaper price and, you know, you you ride the wave and hope that he keeps up with a hot streak maybe in another good matchup against a, a weak starting pitcher. Or on the opposite end of things, you see players who were struggling, having a really bad cold streak, and their price is depressed due to that. Maybe now they have a good matchup against a weak left-hander, and they're a lefty masher. So you can go in, slot in that guy at a cheaper price, and take advantage of that. So that that goes back a little bit to the market exploitation, but it's also a trend. I mean, you want to take advantage of these things in every way that you can. So obviously, these things are all subjective. Hot streaks, cold streaks, finding the guys when they're fading the hot streak when they get too expensive avoiding the players for a certain point till their price is depressed enough that you're willing to play them again. And the next part of it is going to be injuries. So injuries not as relevant in Major League Baseball as it is in NBA. Obviously in the NBA, you know, you've got a starter out. You've got a guy who's going to slot right into that starting lineup. You don't know if he's going to be playing 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's hard to say sometimes. Usually you can have a pretty good idea, but some teams are very unpredictable like that. Whereas in baseball, aside from platoon hitters and designated hitters, you generally know that 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 player is going to play the entire game. So these things really come into account, and they're very important. You know, you can notice that a guy has been batting higher in the order because he's riding a hot streak, and you take advantage of a cheap price tag for a guy that's typically in the six or seven hole. Maybe he's batting second. So that's another example of a trend. And uh, next is going to be noise. Um, The noise is going to be what you hear on Twitter, what you see in your news feed, what you see on all of your websites, everything that you all, everything you use for your research. There's always going to be a player, two players, maybe an entire team that everyone's talking about. And now there's, there's a few ways that you can go with this. Um, if there's a, a lot of touts, a lot of people that are on certain players, certain teams, then maybe that player is just actually a really good play and you need to be following the herd. But in GPPs, big time tournaments, things of that nature, at times it may be beneficial for you to fade these players. So you need to choose your spots wisely and you need to see where you're getting your information from. You know, Obviously a guy stepping into the lineup batting seventh isn't going to be nearly as valuable as a guy stepping into the lineup and batting second. So make sure you check where you're getting your sources from. And you know the players that are really popular, especially on Twitter, everyone talking about them, touting them, etc. Those players can really help or hurt you in a big field tournament. For instance, if you have a Troy Tulowitzki at home, if Troy Tulowitzki is at home facing a left-hander, he's one of the best plays, if not the best scenario for any player in Major League Baseball that day. And if you play him and he has a great game, great. You've got an edge over the people that didn't play him. But if you don't play Troy Tulowitzki that day and he has a big game, chances are he's going to be not only the highest-owned shortstop, but likely the highest-owned player on the board unless there's an elite value that's emerged. So sometimes that's where you're trying to be contrarian, but you're just you're just being stupid at that point. You're, you're going out of your way to try to fade the masses 
when all the masses were right. So really making sure you choose your spots wisely is very key. And, you know, also you want to make sure, like I said, with the sources, if you're seeing lineups, there's been lineups that have come out that have been bad, not accurate lineups, maybe a guy that's not even in there, things of that nature. And you want to make sure you have reliable sources. So check up, check with the team Twitter accounts, maybe find yourself a list, follow all the team Twitter accounts. Beat writers more relevant for NBA, of course. But, you know, you want to look at some guys also who can step into some bigger roles. And this this sort of is a bigger bigger aspect in NBA. You know, for instance, Kevin Durant being out, everyone knows Russell Westbrook was almost an automatic play until his price got really, really high. It was over 13000 there for a little while. But, you know, if you play a guy like that and he goes for 80 fantasy points, you've got an edge over everyone that didn't play him. So, like I said, really important to find your spots, reliable sources, and choose the smart times to fade players like that. So, for instance, opening day this year, everyone was on the Brewers, including myself, and they were in a great spot against Colorado, against a weak pitcher, Kyle Kendrick, got mowed down, didn't score a single run. So, I mean, these things, there is variance, these things are going to happen, but choosing the times that you follow the herd and other times that you fade the herd is really going to find you an edge in the long run. And being able to determine the difference over when a great play is just a popular play and when a great play is actually a great play is going to be key. So if you have any questions about things like that, you can always find me on Twitter at BigGiggly42. Check out all the other great Daily Fantasy Academy content that we have on DailyFantasyCafe.com. And we will see you again on the podcast every single day.